my beauties. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel and I'm a board certified fellowship trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today I'm going to be doing a video on neck rejuvenation. So what treatments are effective and work for thin, crepey, wrinkled, loose skin on the neck? Because we definitely know that there are options available for our face skin, but sometimes it's hard to match our neck skin to catch up with our face skin because our neck is often neglected. It's an area that we don't start caring about until we're a little bit older. And it's sometimes a little bit, I hate to say it's too late because we can rewind the hands of time and we can help rejuvenate and reverse photo damage and loss of elasticity and collagen but it's better to be proactive of course as with everything but most times people often neglect the neck and you know they start to notice a discrepancy between the neck skin and the face skin so we need to catch the neck up you guys so this after watching this video hopefully you'll kind of be more familiar with neck rejuvenating treatments that are actually effective and work and as always i'm non-sponsored all my content is non-sponsored i stay true to that i always have and i always will so anything that i recommend even in this video is what i truly recommend that's best for my patients based on results data science backing it up and clinical trials clinical studies and just being very experienced with a lot of devices that are on the market in today's um, in today's aesthetic world. So I ask that you like, subscribe, and share this channel with anyone who may find it useful or anyone who wants non-sponsored content by a board-certified dermatologist, which is hard to find on YouTube these days. So I, I will always be non-sponsored, and um, the only way to grow is by word of mouth because I'm not in contract with any companies, nor will I ever be. So I appreciate your support. All right, let's take a deep dive into neck rejuvenation. Okay, so when talking about neck rejuvenation, it's always important to remember that the neck skin is different than the skin on the face. It lacks many of the sebaceous glands and the histology, and what I mean by histology is the way that the skin looks under the microscope is very different than the skin on the face. And if anybody tells you wrong, they either were misinformed or they're not educated in this area or they're pretending that they are and they really aren't because just spending decades of looking at skin as a Mohs micrographic skin cancer surgeon, I looked at skin under the microscope for decades at the skin of the face, the skin on the neck, and I just was always amazed at how different the histology was, how different the cellular makeup was, and just when thinking about these different procedures or even skincare actives for the neck, it's always important to understand what are these cells doing? What do these cells need? What are the extracellular matrix proteins doing, and how are they uh, disfragmented and how are they dysfunctional and how do we resuscitate them and, and so I want you guys to think like dermatologists I want you guys to think like dermatopathologists and cosmetic dermatologists like I do so when I see a patient in the office and I see their neck skins a little bit different than their face skin I'm assessing and trying to with my x-ray vision look at what that skin and think of in my mind what that skin would look like correlated to looking at under the microscope so if the skin's crepey, if there's wrinkles, if it's lost elasticity, but the face is nice and smooth and tight, but there's like splotchiness on the neck, there's brown spots, there's white spots, there's idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis, there's all this stuff going on in the neck. What does that look like under the microscope? And when you think of the cellular makeup of the neck skin and what's going on there, you can kind of customize treatments to target that. Is there hyperpigmentation? Is there loss of collagen? Is there loss of elastin? Sometimes there's everything going on. And so when you think of the neck skin, just know that it's a different cosmetic subunit and the skin is different. There's a different makeup of cells that make up that skin. There's a different... Um, percentage of, you know, you don't have the sebaceous glands in the neck that you do as many in higher density and size that you do in the face. There's a lot of things that are just different about the neck skin. The epidermis is thinner, the dermis is thinner, the subcutaneous fat is thinner. There's other glandular structures that are different than what you see in the face and, and the cellular makeup and composition is just different. So certain treatments that may work for the face may not be as great for the neck and vice versa. So I'm just going to kind of go over a list of treatments that are effective and have proven the test of time and even some newer treatments that could be used for neck rejuvenation. And it may be a combination of some of these treatments and some of these treatments may be targeted to certain um, phenotypic um, or clinical presentations that, that some of you may or may not have. So some of you may have wrinkles, but you may not have any discoloration. Some people may have discoloration and no wrinkles. Some people may have both. Some people may have what's called poikiloderma of savat, where you have that kind of splotchy, mottled, redness, sun damaged, thin skin kind of look on the neck from years of sun damage. Sometimes people will just have horizontal neck bands and they won't have any photo damage or loss of elasticity yet. So just take it with a 
grain of salt and I'm just gonna kind of go through a few treatments that work and are effective and you can see if this does or does not apply to you. And if I don't mention a treatment, it's because I've used it, I've had it, and I wasn't impressed with it or it gave underwhelming results or it doesn't have good data or the treatment's just definitely not worth it. So um, keep in mind, if I can't say anything positive, I just don't say anything at all and I just won't mention it. But you can drop a comment in the comment section and ask me anything, but I just wanted you guys to keep that in mind as well. So first, one of the easiest first line treatments for neck rejuvenation, surprisingly, is neurotoxins. So neuromodulators, this could be Botox, this could be Dysport, it could be Javo, it could be Xeomin, and neck rejuvenation with Botox, you know, of course, it all depends on the amount of severity of neck, you know, um, a loss of elasticity, or if there's horizontal neck bands, or if there's platysma bands, there's so many different presentations that photo aging or, or aging or, you know, rejuvenation of the neck can present with. And it's important to keep in mind that Botox can do a lot of things. Doing Botox kind of in this little area right here will help tuck, tuck under that AP profile and kind of tuck up that those little cords or bands that you can start to see forming under the chin for the platysmal neck bands. You know, sometimes people have really bandy looking necks that can age them, especially in photos. Doing a little bit of Botox along those bands can a little can go a long way. For the horizontal neck bands, Botox is a really great way to kind of relax those lines. Of course, you never want to overdo it. I never personally do more than 20 units in the neck. And again, this is just a YouTube video to educate you guys. This isn't medical information or training in any way, but usually, you know, doing about 20 units in the platysmal bands or or you know, underneath the submental area or across the horizontal neck bands can help smooth the skin. It can also help smooth those neck bands and just give a more rejuvenated look to the skin. So when you're exercising and doing core body training, just make sure that you're holding up your head because sometimes it can cause a little bit of weakness in those muscles. I always like to warn patients about that. Of course, go to a highly trained provider for Botox because if it's done too much or in the wrong area, too deep or the injections aren't precise and perfect, you know, it can cause dysphagia or difficulty swallowing, which no one wants. So not to scare you guys, but it just, it's when it's done by the book, it's perfect. But if you go to someone on a Groupon or somebody who's not very highly trained or they don't reconstitute the Botox correctly, it can not be good and you can not get the results you want. You can get complications as with everything. So next treatment for neck rejuvenation is actually filler. So this is not hyaluronic acid based filler. These are biostimulatory fillers and Sculptra and Radius. Sculptra is polylactic acid. Radius is calcium hydroxyapatite. Both are biostimulatory fillers. What does that mean? That means that they stimulate your fibroblasts, which are the collagen producing cells in your skin to make collagen and elastin and all those extracellular matrix proteins that keep the skin nice and firm and tight. So biostimulatory fillers are the treatment of choice for neck rejuvenation. You don't wanna use a hyaluronic acid filler because those, although are great for nasolabial folds, for marionette lines, for lips, for tear troughs, temples, all the, all the things, it's not what you would use for, for neck rejuvenation. It'll look lumpy, it'll look bumpy, and if you're a newer injector trying to experiment and try it out, just proceed with caution because you don't wanna use hyaluronic acid fillers in the neck. Trust me, like I remember when we were first year residents and our attendings told us all not to ever do HA fillers in the neck. Of course, we had a bunch of you know product to play with and we injected each other in the neck and we had all these nodules and it was horrible. So all those mistakes we got rid of you know, out of the way when we were first year residents and we were like 25 years old and that was, a hundred years ago, but um, just just take it from, from me, do not use hyaluronic acid fillers in the neck. You wanna use biostimulatory fillers. And out of the two biostimulatory fillers, Sculpture and Radius in the US, my practice is in Orange County in the United States, so these are the only two currently FDA approved biostimulatory fillers on the market. Um, out of the two, Radius performs a lot better in the neck than Sculpture does. I love Sculpture for mid-face volume loss. I love it for booty augmentation and cellulite smoothing, but I do not like Sculpture for the neck. I think it's more prone to um, having complications in nodules. And so just doing, being a cosmetic dermatologist for over 15 years and playing with all these products over time, you get to know which ones perform best in certain areas and which perform worse in certain areas and which one are a little bit higher risk um, in the treatment areas that we're discussing. And so Sculptra um, doesn't have a great track record of neck rejuvenation because of its complication of um, nodules and um, lumps and bumps that can form. Radius does beautifully well and um, it's hyper dilute radius and we use a little cannula and we inject it all throughout the neck. Again, just go to a very highly trained provider. This is not an educational training forum. I'm thinking about maybe having my own training academy to kind of redirect people um, and give them the proper training because there's 
so many people doing things the wrong way these days, but when done with a cannula, hyperdilute radius, which is calcium hydroxyapatite, can stimulate your skin cells to make that collagen and elastin and help smooth neck contour to help with crepey skin to make it smoother, tighter, and firmer. And so um, radius is one of my favorite fillers for the neck and none of the other fillers really um, are our candidates for this indication. Next up are thread lifts. So PDO threads, um, PLLA threads, there's so many different threads on the market. I used to do a ton of thread lifts, you know, for lower face rejuvenation, neck rejuvenation, it works really well for that. The results are very operator dependent. So if you see mixed reviews online, that's why. It really depends on the person that you go to. Um, when I perform thread lifts, I would say the results lasted about one to two years. It really can help tighten the neck skin and it not only works from a mechanical mechanism of action by mechanically pulling and lifting on the skin, but it's almost like a slow deep of filler. It stimulates your um, fibroblasts to make collagen and elastin and to make volume um, in the neck skin too. So you're not only getting the tightening effect of it, but you're getting kind of the volume restoration and collagen stimulation as well, which makes it really nice. To be honest though, with my energy-based devices, with Thermage and with Eloquor, which is now a newer treatment for tightening, which I'll get into it at the end of this video, um, I haven't been doing as much thread lifts on the neck because these two devices that I mentioned before have longer lasting results, happier patients, and are a little bit more um, long-term rejuvenating with respect to effects than threadless. But threadless, before I had an Elecor and before we were doing a lot of um, thermage on the neck was my go-to. Um, but now that we have these other devices, it's not 100% my favorite at the top, but it definitely is a great treatment when done by a skilled provider. So lasers can also be used for neck rejuvenation. Now, it's not so much for tightening. Fraxel, which is a, you know, the Fraxel Restore is a non-ablative laser. There's also a Fraxel Repair, which is an ablative laser. You have a CO2, you have an Erbium, you have the mixed hybrid ablative, non-ablative, like a Halo. There's lots of different lasers and any resurfacing laser can definitely help with photo rejuvenation of the neck to make the neck skin look appear brighter, younger, tighter but it usually takes more than one treatment and usually we recommend three treatments based about one month apart and lasers are only at the surface. So that's why we call them resurfacing. It's kind of like taking sandpaper and sanding the top layer of the skin to kind of make it smoother and tighter and look a little bit better, but it doesn't give that deep stimulation of collagen like a thermage would or like a biostimulatory filler would. So although I love lasers, I'm a laser expert and laser specialist. I play with lasers all day long, but for neck rejuvenation, it just kind of scratches the surface. Sometimes it's not in my opinion, deep enough to really help with tightening. Um, it's more for helping with poikiloderma of Savat, which is kind of the modeling um, red, brown kind of discoloration, the weather beaten look that we can get on our necks um, from years of sun exposure. It helps with that for sure. It will help with melasma on the neck. V-beam is another laser that can help with like redness and splotchiness of the neck. But although lasers can make the skin on the neck look better, they're not the best for tightening. They do tighten a little bit, but that's not their main goal. That's not their main thing that they do. They just resurface and make the skin look better and they do stimulate collagen. But if you really want to tighten, you want to use a biostimulatory filler with a tightening device, which a tightening device, that's all they do. So like a Thermage, for example, I'm not a huge Ulthera and Softwave. Um, fan because I feel like those results are a little bit underwhelming, but under the blanket of energy-based devices, those do better with respect to outcomes when talking about neck tightening than lasers do. Don't get me wrong, lasers do a great job, but they're just resurfacing and help the skin look a little bit better, but they don't do a lot for tightening. Now, sometimes combining a peel with the laser can be effective although this is very it's gonna be high risk you guys and i see plastic surgeons do this a lot i hate to say it sometimes when plastic surgeons have you out under general anesthesia in an or they'll do a peel and they'll do a laser and when i was in my fellowship i remember having a lot of legal cases be sent to us because we were a, you know a very um prestigious laser institute and we would get all the you know trade wrecks and complications happening from other offices mainly plastic surgeons because let's be honest they're great with surgery but skin's not their domain they try to get into the derm domain, but sometimes they can really hurt people and really scar people, especially because their patients are out under anesthesia. And when you combine a laser with a peel, it can actually be very effective. However, um, basically what happens is the peel takes the first layer of the epidermis off and then you put the laser on top of that. So it's really going deeper in the skin. And so the problem I have with that is that if you're under general anesthesia, you can't say, okay, that is way too deep, that's hurting way too much. And sometimes I think um, surgeons can be a little 
over aggressive with it and do a peel laser combo and it could just be really high risk for complications. If it's done correctly by somebody who is very well versed with lasers, even if they're a plastic surgeon, that you want to make sure they have laser training because they spent, those guys spend like eight years in the OR, but they don't have much of lasers in the curriculum. So you want to make sure that you have a, a laser specialist, somebody who's very well versed with lasers, even whether or not they're a surgeon or not, and make sure that you don't have a complication. So that's the only thing I'm wary of when you combine lasers with peels, because I get referred complications all the time, and that's usually the scenario what it what, what, in which it happens. So peels can be very effective, um, but you know, proceed with caution. And again, I do feel like tightening devices and biostimulatory fillers give a deeper tightening that's longer lasting and more impactful and more impressive with respect to the outcome. And meanwhile, the overzealous, overaggressive surgeon is like going to town and then causes scarring. And then they say, oh no, okay, send a derm to fix this complication. And it just happens a lot, you guys. So just proceed with caution. Chemical peels are effective for neck rejuvenation. Not my favorite. When combined with lasers, they could be a little bit more effective, but I don't think are worth the potential risk or scarring or side effects that can come with it. So I would say just stick with topicals and you know invest your money in energy-based devices, threads, or Elicor. But I know that people will probably ask me about peels, so I wanted to include them in um, some of the, the treatments that I talk about in this video. So we already touched upon energy-based devices. I think, um, you know, I've talked about energy-based devices in other videos. For those of you who don't know, lasers are collimated light in a coherent wavelength. Energy-based devices uses uh, heat in the form of either radio frequency, ultrasound, micro-focused ultrasound to stimulate collagen. And so I love energy-based devices. Thermage is my favorite out of all of them. And what it does is it basically has a transducer that rests on the skin and it heats up the under the deeper structures of the skin to stimulate those fibroblasts to make collagen while well, it keeps the surface of it cool. That's why it doesn't cause hyperpigmentation. It can be used in all skin types, which is really great. And the other week, I just, I think it was last week, I just posted um, a video on um, the risk of volume loss with um, thermage or energy-based devices or radio frequency devices, which you can refer to if you have a question about that. But again, as with anything, if it's done by the an untrained provider or somebody who's not as highly skilled or familiar with the device, or if it's an old device, that is a risk. But for all intents and purposes, Thermage is one of my favorite tightening devices in the office. There's no downtime, there's no pain when done correctly. Their results last five to six years and it really can push back the date somebody will need surgery, if at all they need surgery. And so Thermage is a great option that's non-surgical for neck rejuvenation. And I feel like the results just really last a long time because you're stimulating your neck skin to do the work. You're not passively nip tuck pulling or passively pulling up a thread. You're inducing your skin to make those extracellular matrix proteins that's going to smooth the skin. And what's better than that? There's nothing better than when you induce your body to do the work or you induce your skin cells to do the work because those results look natural and they're longer lasting. I even had some patients you know, that I've seen before who have never done anything for say neck rejuvenation and they go and have a neck lift and they look great for the first year and then one to two years later, they come right back and they look exactly like they did pre-op before their surgery because we take before and after photos. And the reason why this happens is because the skin needs collagen and elastin and extracellular matrix proteins in it to keep it nice and smooth and tight. Even if you cut and you pull and you suture and you do surgery and you can temporarily make the lines go away, if that skin doesn't have collagen in it, it's just gonna fall again, you guys. So neck lifts don't really last unless you upkeep with energy-based devices or active ingredients or some type of stimulation for your skin to keep the collagen stores up because without collagen in that skin, it's like suturing wet toilet paper. It's just gonna, it's gonna fall again and you're gonna, gravity's gonna eventually take over. So the goal is to keep collagen in the skin and to keep that skin nice and smooth and tight through that mechanism. So I know a lot of you guys are going to ask me about microneedling. I'm not the biggest microneedling fan. I'll include it in this video because I know that you guys are going to ask me in the comments. Microneedling, you're going to find a lot, a dime a dozen on every Medi Spa because it's an easy platform to use. The marketing is amazing and we have celebrities backing it up, even though I don't know if these celebrities actually use these microneedling devices. But microneedling results are usually underwhelming. Patients sometimes can see a difference and it's always questionable, like they're not sure. The results are underwhelming. It can cause scarring, hyperpigmentation, and 
in my opinion, it's not worth the investment because you usually get roped into a package because you're not gonna go back for your second microneedling treatment because it worked. You're gonna go back usually because you're roped into a package. And whenever there's a package deal at a medi spa, just question why. Like that treatment should be so great and make you so happy that you go back for more because you like it and you want it, not because you're roped into a package or a membership. So just be wary of that. So microneedling for some people may be an option. I'm not the biggest fan because I just don't think it gives the results or the outcomes that are worth it. Okay, and the last treatment that I wanna talk about is Elicor. So Elicor is a newer device. So for those of you who don't know, it's a microcoring device. It's a new revolutionary technology that's never been used before. And the Elicor device has been used and FDA approved to treat lower face laxity on the face for rightids that are moderate to severe in severity of the lower face. Using it on the neck is what we call off-label, meaning it's a, not an FDA indication. We're kind of using it in an area that it wasn't FDA approved for and seeing how it goes. Now, a lot of my colleagues, when uh, Elicor was first launched, were using it on the neck, they were using it on the abdomen, on the body, skin, you know, other areas besides the face and having great results. Some people were having not so great results. So when I was an early adapter of Elicor, of course, I participated, for those of you who don't know, in the clinical trials back in 2017, 18, I was very impressed with it and have been waiting for it to be FDA approved, which it was last no October in 2023. And I incorporated it into my practice and rolled it out very slowly because I wanted to make sure that, you know, it was still giving us the results and outcomes that we saw years back in the clinical trials. But then there was a lot of talk of using Elicor for neck rejuvenation. And some of my colleagues were using it. And in our academic meetings, at our dermatology meetings, we were seeing before and afters with really impressive results. But I wanted to see this myself before rolling this out and actually participating um, in, you know, using this on my own patients, which we have, and we've gotten really, really great results so far. We just started doing it a few months ago and I'm going to do a subsequent video just on Elicor with before and afters, not only on the face, but on the neck as well, because we're getting great results with that. So I always like to be transparent with you guys. I always like to talk to you like doctors and I like to treat you guys like scientists and kind of show you how I'm thinking and why we do things the way we do. So it's one thing just to talk about these different treatments and mechanisms of action, but really understanding the thought process behind it, the pathophysiology behind it, the mechanisms of action is everything. And it'll make you guys more you know um, informed when you're deciding what treatments will be best for you so my hesitation with Elicor and I'm just going to talk to you like I do my colleagues my hesitation was is micro coring takes little micro cores of skin out they're like these little cylindrical teeny tiny little punch biopsies that basically excise skin out and after the skin is removed the skin closes so it's like taking like a block of cheese turning poking holes in it making it Swiss cheese and then having those those holes closed so it's like shrink wrapping the skin so great for the neck that would be amazing right the concern i had was because that neck skin is so delicate and the handpiece for elicor was engineered for the face which is thicker that skin is thicker and when you're doing elicor on on thicker skin you have to have an assistant i have stephanie and mary who are they're amazing they're my nurses they're incredible i would probably never do an elicor case without them because they stabilize the skin and unless i have someone who really knows what they're doing assisting me i'm not going to perform the procedure because stabilizing that skin and getting the micro cores out is everything so there's a vacuum that's attached to the handpiece and after those little micro cores are taken out the vacuum sucks it out it sounds gross and if this is too much for you guys just keep fast forwarding but it sucks those little pieces of skin out but what happens is when the skin's thin or the depth of the penetration of the device isn't deep enough my concern was that you're going to poke holes but those little micro cores aren't going to get sucked out the vacuum's not going to suck it out and then you just have micro needling and we all know that that's not the most effective treatment, right? Then we're just microneedling the neck. So my concern was the skin being too wobbly, too thin, the handpiece not being engineered for the neck, and the skin wouldn't be able to be held taut enough for it to have a perfect placement of that Elicor handpiece on the skin, microcoring, extracting those skin columns out and shrink wrapping the skin. So the first time we did it, you know, I did it with Stephanie, my nurse, who's amazing. She held the skin super tight for me and we played with it. We played with different settings and we got it. And we visually saw the microcores coming out. So this is like what I say with everything. It's highly operator dependent, you guys. Microcoring is one thing, but microcoring and actually get those microcores of skin out is a whole nother other situation. So I remember when Elicor was first launched and people were saying, well, Dr. Kappel, other doctors are doing Elicor on the neck. And I'm like, I'm sure they are, but are they just microneedling or are they getting those cores out? And it wasn't until I did it myself and I did it on a few of my family members. Thank you guys for who are my, you know, my 
first, you know, first, second, and third people who I did Elkhorn and the neck on, and we saw the micro cores. And then I was comfortable, and then I saw the results, and then I was impressed with the results. They were amazing. So then I started doing it on my patients. So there was a little delay when I, my um, Elkhorn was launched for me to use it on the neck, but now that we've been doing neck treatments with it, patients have little to no downtime. It's one week of some swelling and bruising, and then they look great, and then even three months later, their results are perfect. So I wanted to include Elkhorn in this uh, treatment and the list of treatments for neck rejuvenation as well. So with the majority of this video, we've been talking about treatments, injectables, energy-based devices, lasers, thread lifts, and what we haven't talked about are serums and active ingredients. So I have my own skincare line, MD Air, which is the most innovative technology because my scientific mind had to create products with the most innovative active ingredients and vehicle delivery systems, and I wanted to engineer one for the neck, which we called the Neck Tight Serum. You have to have certain active ingredients for neck skin. If somebody tells you that your eyelid skin is the same as your skin on your face and the same on your neck and you can use one serum for everything, they're either not that educated or they think they're educated and may not have looked at skin under the microscope or had extensive derm dermatopathology education or just make have be misinformed. But it's really important to have active ingredients that are, are really impactful for that thin, delicate neck skin that's different. Our Giroline is like Botox in a bottle. For those of you who want the mechanism of action, it's the same snap snare complex mechanism of action that Botox has. And those little thin muscles under that thin layer of skin, when you have our Giroline in the neck serum products, like the neck tight, it just helps smooth that out, gives a beautiful um, plumped contour, and it just has a really smoothing, tightening effect. Other active ingredients, peptides, hugely important. Um, polypodium leucotonous, DNA repair enzymes, and different active ingredients that's gonna st stimulate those neck fibroblasts to make collagen and elastin is everything. So if you guys haven't checked out my MD Air, I try not to talk about that too much on this YouTube channel because this is more for educational purposes, but if you look at the whole science page on the neck tight serum, you'll understand why. And if you get a neck tight serum, or I'm sorry, if you get a neck serum, just make sure that it has the active ingredients for specifically engineered for neck skin. And it actually can do a lot. Like I say, doing procedures in the offices like going to the gym and doing your skincare and the skincare products that you use at home is like eating clean and drinking your protein so just keep that in mind so there's lots of procedures that we can do for neck rejuvenation but you know of course um, using serums and topicals on a day-to-day -day basis will make a long-term impact on the skin as well and of course always photo protect that neck and of course your decollete uh, the under submental area of your neck as well because that skin is more exposed to reflection of UV light um, off the asphalt, sand, snow, concrete, you know, it, it's getting, you know, a really high dose of UV light, um, infrared light, blue light, environmental toxins, pollutants, and it's not only getting more exposure to those insults, but it's also usually less protected because we often forget about it. So I hope this helps you guys. Drop a comment in the comment sections. I hear you. I see you. I give preferential treatment to those who are subscribed when I answer questions. And just keep in mind, I'm in this office, in this clinic, seeing patients all day. So if I don't get to the comments right away, it's because I'm busy doing this. All right. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching.